Okay, hi there everyone, my name's Chris, welcome back. The other day we had a look at the lower receiver on my uh, slightly customised KWA LM4. So you're going to be taking a look at the upper receiver group, the entire fore end, what I've done to it. Uh, I did a complete review on the stock KWA rifle uh, about a year ago now. I'll put a link to that just in the centre there if you want to check out the how the plain rifle looks, you know, it's pretty much standard uh, USGI M4A1 style. But I've, uh, I've acquired some various other parts for it since then, done some work on it, so we're going to go through them now, just to explain what, why I think they're good, how, how, you know, how they work in conjunction with each other. So we'll start from the actual upper receiver itself. I've removed the bolt carrier group here, the nozzle. Uh, I have slightly downgraded the FPS. Um, you can find tutorials on forums like on his airsoft on, on how to do that, bring that FPS down. But the bolt carrier itself, the nozzle, the uh, retaining plate here, they are stock apart from, it's going to be tricky to show, but just inside here, there's normally a little C clip, might be an E clip, can't remember exactly, that holds. This is that silver actual detent just sticking through there, normally held in, it actually retains the spring that keeps the nozzle there and it's normally held in with a metal clip which is really annoying to take on and off. I've replaced it with a small o-ring and believe it or not it does actually hold it securely even when the weapon's functioning it just makes it that much easier to work on the nozzle and the bolt carry group. Charging handle is the stock one it is well made um, it's quite simple there's nothing fancy about it I'll probably pick up the PTS Rainier Arms version that replaces this That'd be a nice upgrade, but this one does the job just fine for now. <coughs> the upper itself, all stock. I probably will get in here with some uh, with some wet and dry paper and get rid of a lot of the paint on the inside just to smooth the uh, cycling of the bolt. As you can see, it sort of every time you fire, it kind of wears off a little bit of paint and you create a bit of a nasty residue on the inside. Dust cover, forward assist stock parts um, they just work really well it's actually even though it's not all one solid piece this upper it's actually been really solid uh, for me um, no problems at all with it rear sight Magpul Gen 2 Embus nice and lightweight does what the, does the job that a backup iron sight needs to do optic is the primary arms sort of version of the T1 You know, it's uh, it's it holds up to the recoil of these gas blowback rifles really well. It does a fantastic job of that. American Defense quick detachment mount on there holds it on very nicely. This one's actually threaded. You can put a uh, a kill flash on there, which is obviously going to protect against BB hits. You've got 11 settings on it. Um, battery lasts for ages. Zeroed via the uh, adjustment dials underneath these covers and uh, for considering how cheaply you can pick these up from primary arms um, really a, a brilliant choice for airsoft now one fairly large job I have to do to this upper receiver is to the threads on the front section here normally the barrel nut screws on the actual spec the dimensions of the thread were, were an airsoft sort of um, specification the actual the pitch the lead all that stuff on the thread would not fit a real AR-15 handguard so uh, I took a, a, a die nut to that, ran it down, obviously you know quarter return, back it off, quarter return, all that good stuff using plenty of lubrication, cut that thread, made it to the real steel specification because I wanted to fit this particular handguard and this is the Midwest Industries SS Gen 2 rail this is a, if I remember right, this is a 12 inch version fit, still got a standard 14 and a half inch barrel there just get a little bit of protrusion, really nice length, it's a really lightweight handguard considering it's all uh, it's all metal it looks cool, it's really really thin, you can, you can grip this um, get that thumb over ball grip really well on this hangout it works fantastically for that if you're in the US these can actually be picked up surprisingly cheaply for considering how well they're made 
of all the tubular handguards, which are obviously uh, very much in vogue now, this is definitely one of the best options on the market. For uh, if I'm running a sling on two point mode, Maple Industries rail sling attachment, very very simple. Really, uh, you know, obviously you can hang the weight of the gun on it by, without uh, any worries at all. Just does its job. It's the Haley Strategic light mount. I can't remember if this is the thorn tail or the drop wing. I can never quite remember, but um, the actual the screws that come with it are the same spec as these holes that you see in the Midwest handguard. So I've got one going into the actual threaded hole in the handguard, and then one has a retaining plate on the inside just holding the light mount on. I've got a Surefire M600C. Um, you know, it's it's fairly large, as you can see, it's a little bit heavier than I'd like. I'd maybe prefer an M300A, but I managed to pick this up for a bit of a steal on eBay. So I'm pretty happy with it. SR07 Surefire tail switch here. You got temporary on with this part, and then you press this button if you're just sort of maybe using it as a navigation aid or just to highlight something and you want it and you want to leave your light on without having to constantly press the button. You've got that switch, and as I say, the momentary on the front. When you're actually holding the rifle like so, it works uh, works really well. Your thumb just sits straight on there, but you're not. You can actually crimp your hand really tightly onto there, and it won't discharge the light until you specifically move your thumb into the position to press that switch, which is obviously nice. Outer barrel and inner barrel, both stock, same as the uh, the hop unit. They do a nice job. PTS battle comp break. I think this is the 1.5. I'm never quite sure if it's classed as a uh, as a break or a flash hider or what, but I just you know it just looks cool. Doesn't do anything in airsoft. Just looks nice. Looks a, certainly looks a lot cooler than the, the standard USGI flash hider I find. Front back of hind sight again to match with the rear. Gen 2 emboss. Nice and light, easy to deploy, easy to uh, retract. Again, it just really does the job that you want a, a rear boost to uh, to fulfil for you. So that is uh, everything, I think. The, the actual gun in this setup, I find it, it works really nicely for me, the way I ha like to actually shoot a rifle. Um, very very nice setup. Really, it's the the Midwest handguard in particular is just uh, really just fantastic. I think there's a slight step you can just about make it out between the rail on the upper and that 12 o'clock rail on the Midwest, but it's very slight. Uh, once I've secured it all on there, it, it is a uh, there is there is nothing nothing at all moving. Uh, it's torqued down pretty tightly. Everything's Loctited. Got my little zip ties there, just giving a bit of control to the routing of that Surefire uh, tail switch. Overall, the gun itself, really fantastic. And uh, yeah, there we have it, guys. If you like uh, more content like this, want to keep up to date on the uploads on the channel, got a Facebook page which I update pretty much every day. I'll put a link down in the description box. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers, all those thumbs up, all that nice stuff. It really is much appreciated, guys. Really, uh, helps me out a lot so thank you and uh, I'll see you next time